you're watching the book reviewer. Hello audience and welcome back to another episode of the book reviewer with your host Cindy and I have another review to share. So, um, as you know, um, I have been reading and reviewing the Chronicles of Narnia series. And this review is for The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis. This is the sixth book in the series. There are seven in all, so, um, there is another review or two coming for this series. Um, so we meet Jill Pohl. She is a new character um, who's just been teased. She's at school. She is crying and feeling sorry for herself and she's just in general not feeling very well. Um, we also meet Eustace Scrub which we have met in Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which was, I believe, the last book that we did on this series. Um, I will put a link in the cards section below, or above, excuse me, um, where you can check that video out if you have not done so already. Okay, so if you'll remember, in the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, um, at the end of the book we find Eustace is a changed boy after his ordeal of turning into a dragon and becoming the very thing that he hated most of all and was very very frightened of. Um, so everybody noticed and that was great because it seemed like it had impacted him a lot and it was very, very profound for him, which is always good to quickly and totally change somebody's mind and perspective on things. And you stays, um, befriends her. Um, he's asking, kind of, he knows why he's she's crying because he has observed her for a little bit and knows that there are some boys that pick on her and that she is not feeling that great right then because of them picking on her. So he starts to tell Jill about Narnia and the magic and the fact that he's been to another world and that this world is great. It is full of talking beasts and Aslan and all this other stuff that he has been through. And so she is curious about this place. Um, she is like, okay, how do we get there? And so they stand apart from each other just a little bit and they start I think going around in circles and trying to chant Aslan's name and he isn't sure if it's going to work at all um, but they find themselves in a different place on the top of a cliff um, that's not really a great introduction to a new place is it no. But um, she sees a lion. She is saved by this lion because she starts to fall. And she thinks it's a dream until she remembers that Eustace actually fell off the cliff with no end in sight of where he's going to land. And she starts crying and she was very thirsty after she was crying and she went to a river to drink from because there was a river nearby. Um, she talks to the lion who is of course Aslan and tells him that 
these days has fallen over the cliff. And she tells, he tells her that the boy is safe and that he is in Narnia. Eustace is in Narnia. She tells him that it's kind of her fault that he fell trying to save her from falling and she was showing off just a little bit, um, which she knew was wrong um, and she feels kind of bad about it. Aslan gives her a task and she originally thinks that the lion has mistaken her for someone else because she's not the type that goes on adventures or anything like that. She is a very, I would think, a shy child, sort of. Um, some that are a little, maybe a bit naive, but um, I don't think Jill is more than maybe 10 or 12. So, she could be a little bit naive. Um, so, um, he did not mistake her for anybody else. He picked her. Um, she is to seek this prince that long ago was um, taken from his house and return him to his father. And she is to do this um, unless she dies in the process or if um, she goes back to her world. Um, either way, she is trying to do this because this is the assignment Aslan has given her. She was standing by Eustace. So they rush to the sea and are greeted by a splendid sight. So the king was making some sort of speech and kissing a dwarf on the cheeks and um, they weren't quite sure what was happening but they knew that something big had to have happened. Um, so now before them standing they see a great snowy owl. Um, it's about the size of a small dwarf. So it's a little bit shorter than them but they can see it. It's standing right next to them. Now, if that happened to me, I would probably freak out. Um, but if you'll remember, Eustace has been to Narnia before, so he was not as freaked out as maybe Jill might have been. So the owl tells him that he, they noticed him, while everyone also didn't. And the owl also tells him that he needs to talk to the Lord Regent, Trumpkin the Dwarf. Now, we have met um, Trumpkin before in one of the other book series. Um, I think the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe mentions him a little bit, and then one of the other book series, one of the other books in the series um, deals with an adventure that Trumpkin has. And I'm not sure which one that is. Um, I'll put a note somewhere and if I think of it um, when I edit this. So once the regent heard that they were sent by Aslan, he helped put them up for the night in good order, which means good big beds and, and comfortable clothes and all of that. They realized that time has gone by after our world and Caspian is a very old man. And we meet Prince Caspian in his book, Prince Caspian, which I'll also put a link up in the cards above so you can check that video out if you have not already. So when they finish, oh, okay. When they finish supper, they hear the talk of the horse and his boy which I'll put a link up in the cards above so you can check that video out. Um, this is That was kind of a rundown of um, the stories of Narnia and what they had heard had happened. 
Um, so they find that they're going on an adventure and their task is a little harder than they think because no one has lived to achieve it or finish the job, so to speak. So they relate the story of R Rulian, Rulian, that um, is in the book. They go to a castle where they get bath and clothes and wait until these gentle giants are asleep. They walked into a land of giants. Uh, they run away, and when they come to a field where they meet a queen, they suppose it's a queen because of how she's dressed, because she's dressed in this great, I think, bright green dress that's flowing and she's riding side saddle and they meet a knight that does not talk um they suppose that maybe it's a skeleton or something very very creepy or strange um they don't know because the knight does not talk so the knight makes them promise not to give in to him how much, however much he begs or pleads to be let out of this silver chair that he's going to be tied up on. Um, so he said he may be in a rage if he does. He might turn into a snake and hurt them. And so um, he begs, he pleads, um, and they don't release him. And then he comes to a point where he says the name Aslan. And he says, in the name of Aslan, do this. And so she, Jill is worried about this. She is not sure what to do. They end up releasing him and finding out that he is the Prince Rilliman that they are seeking. Um, and that is the object of their quest. Um, they also destroy the silver chair. And I think it's really awesome when I find out the connection between the title of the book and what they're referring to. So that's always fun. Um, they mention the White Witch that we mention, meet in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I'm not going to tell you the ending, but it is a happy ending. Um, the book has 16 chapters and 243 pages. This does have a Kindle edition, but it's not going to be the same book cover that I have. It's going to be a different book cover Again, I'm not sure how often they do the different book covers, um, why they do them, or what. I may have to do some research a little later about that. Um, I will put a link to that one in the video description below. Um, give me a shout out in the comments below if you have read this book, if you liked it, if you hated it. I want to know. Thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks for subscribing. Keep reading, don't stop believing, and we will see you again tomorrow with another book review. Thanks, guys.